Hello my good friends, welcome to this channel Digimon Explained. My name is Jesse and in this video we are going to get back to promoting one of those amazing Digimon artists out there who create amazing Digimon. Digimon who truly deserve their own place within the existing canon Digimon simply because of how well thought of they are. I promote these artists because my fear is that these fan-made Digimon never really get the attention of us fans or even potentially the Digimon producers. You never know. So I'd like to use this channel as a platform to give a voice to the unheard among us. Something I obviously do with pleasure, which is also why I have no problem to give a shout out to this video's sponsor, Popular Toys. Are you also a collector of toys of your favorite anime? Look at this Renamon doll for example, isn't it great? I think it will look great on one of your shelves. Or this Gilmon spitting fire. I'm sure that that fire will help you melt a marshmallow. <laughs> Truly high quality merchandise. And there are more than just Digimon toys. You have Dragon Ball, Pokemon and way more. If you have some spare money and would like to have one of those figurines in your collection, make sure to get yourself one by going to the website of Popular Toys. The link is in the description box. Make sure to say that Digimon Explained sent you there, as Digimon Explained, aka me, is trying to do what he can for the Digimon community, which he loves so much. Now, let's get back to the video subject. The person, or rather the account that will get a promotion in this video, is the one that goes by the name of Shenuka Ratwat. That's the name you can find in the platform art station, but the person is also active in DeviantArt and on Instagram. All of those links will be placed in the description box. So make sure to give the person some love and if possible make sure to link this video to show our appreciation. But I'll have to first give you some context. So in a previous episode, which I will put the link of in the description box, we talked about the Digimon of Season 1 who didn't get a Bond Digivolution. In Digimon Last Evolution Kizuna, we officially only got Agumon's Bond of Courage Digivolution and Gabumon's Bond of Friendship Digivolution. So there is obviously this question within the community concerning the why the other partner Digimon didn't get a similar treatment of getting a similar transformation. So us fans tried to do justice on those neglected Digimon and we got some amazing art in return. Now, what Genuka Ratwat did is create something similar as the Bond Digivolution and yet very unique. Instead of creating a Digivolution for those Digimon in Season 1 based on their bonds with their human partners, the artist decided to give them a sort of final Digivolution, or in other words, God-level Digivolution. And I did not add the God part myself, it's really Genuka Ratwat's word. And I'm going to show you the art in a minute. I just want to add the following. I am extremely proud of Genuka Ratwat because he, and I'm going to say he from now on because I saw a picture online of Genuka Ratwat who was a male. Genuka gave extensive information about the steps he took in the drawing of those Digimon. He was so kind to talk about the inspiration and he was also so 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 kind to show the steps that led to the final product. So the way he worked is a true delight and it's making it easier for us and I take real pride in showing you his art and putting his link in the description box. Let's go! The first form is that of Final Greymon and Chanuka wrote the following, I quote. My attempt at improving the Agumon Bond of Courage Kizuna design which I have very mixed feelings on. I just feel like his design is too simple, naked and overtly humanoid. Way less cool than War Greymon, who had none of those flaws. War Greymon is my favorite Digimon so the bar is high. This is my attempt at creating a Digivolution that takes from all Agumon's forms. I always thought that the Grey Swords plus the Brave Shield should be incorporated onto one design. Also, the blue stripes plus the brown helmet brought back into the Kizuna design was the best aspect of it. I wanted to add in some metal Greymon elements too, hence the purple fabric and red hair. The overall body plan is War Greymon's of course, but adding back in the more dinosaur elements of a tail. Also, I thought it would be a downgrade not to be able to let this guy fly, so I added in some sun wings based on the crest of courage. I tried to minimize the human jaw and mouth by making the helmet more Kaiser Greymon-esque. In fact, his whole form looks more like Kaiser Greymon in my design, just with a couple of colors and details switched around. I think, because of his elevated power, he can command blue flame versus the red that the other Greymons command. It also matches the energy in his stripes and sword. 
His attacks consist of an explosive shield bash, a generic blue flaming sword slash and a beam of blue solar energy which comes from his wings when they snap together into a sun shape. End quote. To be real honest with you all, I think that Greymon has never looked this aggressive, which is also why I absolutely adore the design. When you look at the helmet and its eyes, you see pure anger. You see that Final Greymon has no time to mess around and wants to get straight to business. A real menace. It's still a humanoid but clearly with dinosaur features that are more pronounced. And the sword and the shield are a very nice touch and the fact that the flame became blue makes it even more interesting. It is said that blue flames are hotter than red flames. So this shows that Final Greymon truly reached godhood in a way or simply said it reached the highest form an Agumon, or a Greymon if you please, could ever hope to reach. The wings are a nice touch. At first I thought it wasn't really necessary, but it has its utility. As Chenuka said, a beam of blue solar energy will come out of it when the wings snap together into a sun shape. The reason why I didn't think the wings were necessary is because many Digimon, including War Greymon, have been seen flying without having wings. So I thought a cape would have suited better. But because the wings serve as a weapon, I will give it a pass. In my opinion, I think that Final Greymon does look incredibly impressive because it truly shows something, I don't know, there is something royal to it. There is something so divine to it. So making it a Final Digivolution only looks soothing to me. What do you guys think of this version of Greymon for a Final Digivolution? Let me know in the comment section. I wanted to give it a perfect score, but uh, as Chris198921 has said, nothing ever deserves a perfect score. So taking that comment into account, the highest a score one can get in this video is a 9 out of 10, and I would give Final Greymon an 8 and a half. Next drawing is that of Final Gerurumon. The following was written, and I quote. With the advent of Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna, I wanted to give you guys my own interpretation of what a Metal Garurumon Digivolution would look. I wanted to add elements from the entire Digivolutionary line into this design, hence the name Final Garurumon. I gunned for what I thought the zenith of the Garurumon Digivolutionary family would embody. What do you guys think? P.S. The Gundam legs I used for him suit him perfectly. Didn't design them myself, it's based off a Gundam named Barbatos. Unquote. Let me first quickly put the Gundam Barbatos next to it. Hmm. Okay, they are indeed the legs of the Gundam Barbatos. Very nice touch. Always a pleasure when Digimon take their inspiration from other anime. Now, the Gerurumon line has always been a very special line to me because, as I've said in countless videos, Gabumon should normally not be the rookie form of Gerurumon, at least when you really try to give meaning to its background story. For those who do not know what I'm talking about, I'll put all videos related to this subject in the description box. But suffice it to say that Gabumon is in fact a reptile Digimon and not a canine, or rather a wolf like Garurumon. So normally, Gabumon shouldn't take the Garurumon route. That's why we even discussed the Digivolution Land for a naked Gabumon, as we called it, when it doesn't carry the Garurumon pelt, which it stole, and which presumably made Gabumon take the Digivolution route of Garurumon. But if we ignore all of this and take a closer look at Final Garurumon, I would give it a solid 7.5 on 10, because following Metal Garurumon, you would quickly understand that the Digimon became very weapons-based. That's really a theme associated to Metal Garurumon, who became a cyborg with invisible lasers, sensors, infrared rays, x-rays, and even has the ability to fly. So, seeing Final Garurumon with a sword, with grenades, and with a minigun, I think the design is really impressive, but in terms of weapons and in terms of its capabilities in combat, I don't think its arsenal would be just as impressive as Metal Garurumon's, or even Gabumon in its Bond of Friendship mode, who both have high-tech weaponry. Whereas Final Garurumon, despite looking impressive, the minigun looks a bit old school in comparison to the weapons of Metal Garurumon and Gabumon in its Bond of Friendship mode. In fact, the most high-tech aspect to Final Garurumon is the Barbatos legs. But then again, I don't exactly know if it has utilities. Maybe it's just aesthetics. So I gave it a 7.5. The third design is that of Final Gatomon. The following was said, here I quote. Man, it was hard to come up with a design for her. For Gatomon's evolution line, we have a cat, a dog, a sphinx, 
a half-dressed lady angel, a fully armored lady angel, and a freaking pink dragon. Eventually I had to pick and choose which forms I wanted and what aspects of each. I knew I wanted to go purply pink, trying to integrate some colors from Angel Woman, Tailmon, and Magna Dramon, and that I also wanted to have more feline aspects in the form too. Ultimately, not sure how proud I am of the final result. Oh well, here's my best shot. I tried to incorporate the metallic teal color from Ophanimon, and as far as I'm concerned, Nefertimon went straight out of the window, although I love her design. End quote. Final Gatomon to me, while I can see numerous awesome aspects to it, I am going to have to give it a 6.5 on 10, because I can't say I am a fan of a final form being near naked. After all, a Digimon who gets into its final form is because it is facing a battle it would normally not win. The whole bond of courage and friendship Digivolution was won because Omnimon wasn't strong enough, so Agumon and Gabumon were given a stronger form but at the cost of their own lives. In the case of Final Gatomon, I would have expected armor covering its body instead of just wings. Sure, you can say that Angel Woman is also partially covered, but to be fair, I wasn't a fan of that either. Battling crazy creatures like Venomiotismon or other dangerous Digimon out there, a woman wouldn't do it with a body that is half covered. But I will give credit where credit is due. I do like the markings on Final Gatomon's body, that's a very nice touch. I like the Digimon characters written on that piece of cloth. Because it does make me wonder what it means. What do those markings mean? What's the message? I also like that the Digimon Angelic type of helmet is there, which covers the eyes entirely. It's good that it was respected. Oh, and the aureole above the head is also a very very nice touch as it shows its divine heritage. And I must say that an angel with purple wings is so original and really puts it on a separate level to all other angels. But I'd have wished for more wings. I count 8 wings, 4 on the back, 2 to cover the holy parts, and 2 at the ankles. I'd have wished to see more wings, because the wings equals an angel's place in the angelic hierarchy. Magna Angemon has 8 wings, meaning that Final Gatmon would be placed around that level, and Seraphimon would be its superior as it has 10 golden wings. So again, I would give it a 6.5 on 10 just because I'm not a fan of the naked parts. Next form is Final Phoenix Mon. the following was written about it, and I quote. Continuing on my series of final god forms of the Digimon from Digimon Adventure, here's my take on Biomon's final form. Again, I tried to incorporate all forms onto one design, whilst trying to give her a unique weapon, a massive Native American spear which she can carry in her talons. Not having Garudamon's male torso also has the benefit of giving her a more androgynous design. Always thought that discrepancy was weird, but whatever. I really wanted to use Biomon's pinks and blues whilst using a little gold from Phoenix Moon to create the overall color scheme. It was really difficult to add in designs for Bergamon, who is literally on fire and whose colors I don't think really match what I was going for. Hopefully you like what I did with the spear and the belt. Obviously overall the design looks like a natural progression from Garudamon, the Biomon's line's most awesome form. Really love the Native American influences and the overall bipedal nature of it all. Frankly, even the X antibody version couldn't improve upon the design and even I struggled with where I could go about trying to create a naturally flowing Digivolution which didn't look like it jumped the shark-like from Garudamon to Phoenixmon. I still love Phoenixmon's design, it's just not as good as the ultimate forms. End quote. Let me be clear about one thing. I can't stress enough how much I was a bit bothered with Biomon's Digivolution line. I didn't like that it went from the pink bird to a bird on fire as a champion, and to a Native American inspired bird as an ultimate. To me, it didn't really give value to Biomon's themes. Final Phoenixmon, on the other hand, is totally Biomon in its mega level, and I adore everything of this design. I give it a 9 out of 10, which means it got a perfect score. The weapon it carries, which looks like a broomstick, is so unique, the feathers on its thighs are great, the Phoenixmon shoulder armor, the pink flame, Boy, on top of that, I think Final Phoenix Moon carries two holy rings on its ankles, who both have the symbol of love on them, meaning that if these truly are holy rings, then Final Phoenix Moon would be linked to the divine. And I don't know if I'm looking right, but I think I see Bergamon around the belt area. Look, there are so many details given to Final Phoenix Moon, it is crazy. This is how Biomon's mega level should have looked like. That's what I believe at least. Hands down. I mean, 
Just look at all the details. It also has these sort of phoenix tails, almost similar to phoenix mon's tails. Uh, on the broomstick, you can also see a Bergamon. It's simply amazing. Easily among my top three favorite fan-made Digimon out there. Well done. Really, really well done. A 9 out of 10 is the least I could give. Third to last, we have Final Rosemon. The following was written about it, and I quote. Whoa, it has been a rough ride trying to get this piece done. As usual, continuing my series of God-level Final Digivolutions for all the adventure Digimon. Final Rosemon has been tricky to do, very little to take inspiration from it in terms of other concept art out there, unlike my previous pieces. You would think that a nature lady with flower parts would be quite common in character design, however, no matter where I looked, I just couldn't find anything that was giving me any inspiration. As usual, all these final evolution designs will take inspiration from all the prior digivolutions. I finally managed to get something I was happy with though. I really wanted more green in this design, mostly to honor the prior forms before Rosemon, stopping it from being too too much like Raflesimon, as well as balancing out the color spectrum of my adventure designs. I really wanted some cactus armor from Togemon to justify all the green, and I also decided to go with cactus flowers for the rest of the color scheme, my favorite of which are pink and yellow, which just happen to occur quite often in Lilymon and Palmon's design. She has Lilymon's wings and head bloom, spikes like Palmon's clothes, and mostly resembles a Rosemon. I even made the pink a far more reddish pink to invoke some Rosemon flavor. Rosemon has a rapier and a whip, and I just envisioned Final Rosemon having multiple vine-like rope darts, which she can shoot out and control at will. Maybe each tip can inject cactus juice. I've also taken down some feedback from my final Gatomon and tried to tone down any potential fan service. I'm cool with fan service, but Rosemon was a little bit too ridiculous. To each their own though. Unquote. Let me give it straight to all of you. Final Rosemon also gets a 9 out of 10. I'm more than convinced that it is quite hard to create a Digimon with plant features, let alone create a god digivolution of a plant based Digimon. And Final Rosemon does give the vibe to be extremely lethal, especially with the vine like ropes, which can be controlled at will. It gives a sort of Dr. Octopus type of vibe. The amount of details is crazy, just look at it. I really cannot say a thing about the design. And I also just noticed that you can see the symbol of purity on the shoulders, so even that was respected. For a final form that is plant based, I really love it. And I like it even more because we clearly see that it is a woman, but it's not one who shows cleavage or naked parts. It's a fully geared woman but with plant armor. And in many ways, it reminds me of a rose with its thorns. Final Rosemon is as elegant as a rose but has thorns everywhere. Well done, 9 out of 10. For the second to last, we have Final Kabuterimon. The following was written, I quote, The Kabuterimon line is one of my favorite Digivolution lines. I love these awesome beetle-like looking beasties. Truly freaky in a way only Digimon can be in terms of designs that can actually be quite scary for children. This guy, meaning Final Kabuterimon, was weirdly difficult to do in a completely different way than my Final Rosemon. As opposed to no reference, there was an abundance of source material I could draw from for cool looking insect knights and warriors, and I had to struggle to create something unique and cool whilst still trying to add in the design motifs of the Kabotermon line. I still try to add in unique aspects to the design which are my ideas, so the design is not just a mix mash of the previous evolutions, but can stand on its own as well. Hopefully you guys can see that too. I wanted a primarily red dude to round out my color spectrum on my adventure designs. This worked out perfectly because of Tentomon and Mega Kabutermon. The blue is of course from Kabutermon itself. I added the ladybug shell back in from Tentomon. Note that it has a trapped lightning cloud under it, which is the source of final Kabutermon's power. Green is back from Tentomon's design, and this time in the form of green lightning, which is due to excited atmospheric oxygen something I read happens in volcanic eruptions. He holds a tesla ball in his head and in each hand which can shoot out high energy plasma blasts, all directed by pincers. I also snuck in the crest of knowledge into his chest which also sneaks in Mega Kabutermon's gem. His head pincers are a mix of Hercules Kabutermon and Mega Kabutermon. There are aspects of all the evolutions design 
in here and I will try to let you spot them." Unquote. Final Kabuterman also gets another perfect score, 9 out of 10. This is of course my opinion, so you shouldn't agree on it, but again, just look at how all things were respected, look at the intimidating aspect to it. Doesn't it look like an insectoid god of some sort? And the electricity has also clearly been respected, which I find very important when taking into account Digimon history. Insect Digimon got their electric abilities from their common ancestor, ancient Beetlemon. So I will always find it important to see electricity as one of the weapons an insectoid Digimon has in its arsenal. And let me tell you the following. When something is good, there is not much to say about it. So for Final Kabuterimon, I don't have much to say, except the following. If this design were to be canon, I'm pretty sure the Tentmon line would be getting way more recognition than it already has because it isn't always the case that insectoid creatures in general, through the various media out there, are like really liked or admired. That's the feeling I get anyway and if I am correct, it wouldn't really be a wonder as many are afraid of insects, many get creeped out because of insects, so it will obviously get less appeal. When it comes to Digimon, you see angels getting a lot of attention, demons, dinosaurs and dragons, all of them get a lot of attention, but insects, while there are some impressive insect Digimon out there, like Jewel Beemon, who is a great insect toy Digimon, or Crank Wagamon for example, I'd have hoped insect Digimon would get a bit more attention, because they have a lot of potential for storytelling and more, they have a lot to offer, and they, they have great history. So to see Final Kabutermon looking like this, looking so godlike, a 9 out of 10 is only appropriate. A very, very good job. Final Digimon art we are going to discuss is that of Final Vikimon. The following was written and I quote. Continuing my series of final god forms for the original Digimon from Digimon Adventure, this time I'm taking on one of my favorites, the Gomamon line, and I really hope I did it justice. I've always loved this line for its uniqueness. Walruses and seals aren't usually portrayed this darn cool in media. I also love the growing Norse influence in the line as we progress through it. What a neat idea. I really like Plesiomon too as a mega, but Vikimon just makes too much sense. Plus, if I'm being honest, Vikimon slightly edges out Plesiomon in terms of design in my opinion. I always like to consider animation and how characters will move. How cool will they be on screen fighting? And Plesiomon just can't hold a candle to a Viking walrus with digital morning stars. This time around, the final design I've settled with should hopefully convey the, that very natural progression Gomamon had throughout his line. No drastic changes or anything should be very recognizable as a progression from Vikingon. Once again, I've tried to take influences from the rest of the line. Gomamon's color scheme, Ikakumon and Vikingon's coloring, Zudomon's hammers and shell, now worn as gauntlets, and even Plesiomon in the longboat pauldrons. Final Vikimon has an eye missing just like Odin and has plenty of Norse influences incorporated into him. Vikings loved ivory and braided their hair, big strong dudes trying to be as testosterone pretty as possible. Hopefully aspects of that are coming through. If you scroll down on the art station page, you can see my process and see that early versions didn't incorporate as many braids and even had a more blue and yellow Plesiomon color scheme. Overall, he was very difficult to settle on a design for, I struggled figuring out his colors and how to take Vikimon's design and, and progress it up a power level, but hopefully I've been at least partially successful." Unquote. My dear friends, Final Vikimon is officially my favorite fan-made Digimon so far, not just in this list, but also among all Digimon fan arts I've seen so far and I'm giving it the perfect score of 10 out of 10. Yes, even if I said I wasn't going to go beyond 9. This one exceeded every bit of expectation I had in a fan-made Digimon, let alone for a final Digivolution of Gamamon. Final Vikimon is my favorite Digimon made by fans and truly, truly, truly look like a final form slash like a god form, literally as you can even see the influences of Norse god Odin. Zudomon was wearing Thor's hammer, right? And Final Vikimon is wearing two massive hammers and you can see the symbol of reliability on them because I'm pretty sure it relies heavily on those hammers. To add to its godliness, it is wearing a cape, which I wanted Final Greymon to also wear, but it has wings instead. Look at the braids, look at the beard, look at the fierce look, look at the details my friends, come on, this is more than doing it justice, this is 
This is truly the sickest art I've ever seen concerning Digimon, hands down. And quite frankly, I'd like to challenge the Digimon developers or anyone to top this piece of art. If Gomamon has this as its bond of reliability form, then I'd be really speechless. And we don't even know about its abilities now that I think of it. But I'm also asking myself, should we know? By just the looks, who would truly try to challenge Final Vikimon? And you know what? Those among us who are big fans of Norse mythology and culture. Or no, hmm, let me rephrase that. Those among us who enjoys the modern God of War series, where Kratos is facing the Norse pantheon, which includes Thor, Odin, Heimdall, and so forth. Don't you think that Shenuka did Final Vikimon true justice from a Norse perspective? I'm really curious to read your comments concerning Final Vikimon. I'm really, really curious, so please let loose out there in the comment section. Also, as this is the end of the video, I want you to not forget the following. I love those fan arts and take great pleasure in discussing them. I take great pleasure to give a chance to those creative spirits among us and show their arts to let them know that their work did not go unnoticed. That is the least I can do. So if you have self-made Digimon that you believe is worth promoting, please send a link to my email which you can find in the description box, as I've been banned from X, formerly known as Twitter, for reasons I don't even know, and quite frankly I don't even care. Send me an email with the link towards your arts, and if possible, give your self-made Digimon a background story, the same way Shinuka Ratwat did about the decision he took. It adds so much value to it, and at least we get to understand more about the decisions. Also, Shinuka Ratwat is asking after your feedback concerning his designs, so be fair and be honest. Constructive criticism is needed if we wish to move forward as a human species. Let me also precise the following. I did receive fan arts in my mailbox, but those fan arts were about canon Digimon, Digimon who already exist. That's not the type of material I'm going to promote, even if some of those arts are absolutely gorgeous. I want to focus on Digimon made by fans because there are some crazy ideas out there, but it's so hidden and I don't like the fact that it is hidden. I want it to be exposed and I'm sure that these developers also want it to be exposed. And I'm helping them with that. And that's also why in this channel I made a separate playlist that is entirely dedicated to Digimon made by us fans. A Digifan art playlist, which is always updated, that way you can catch up to the newest and the oldest videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps a lot. And you know what? It doesn't even cost you a thing. Just press the subscribe button. And make sure to follow Shenuka Ratwats. All of his links are in the description box. And yeah, stay tuned for the next video.